Alrighty, so it's the end of the month. Well, right now it's the beginning of the month, that is. And you know what that means. It's time for me to do the Emotion Index for April. And, you know, technically I could have done the Emotion Index last week, knowing the fact that we just passed the quarter mark. But I thought, you know what, why not wait until all those games finish in April and then we do the Emotion Index in May. So, as always, in terms of the Emotion Index, I look at all 29 teams and how their fans feel about their team now that we passed the quarter mark of the season. Are they feeling that it's been an ideal start? It's been been what we wanted to do. We can't wait until the playoffs begin, though. Again, I think maybe that's a little bit too early to say because we're only a quarter into the start of the season. The second tier is we're happy where we're at, but uh, I also put slash cracks are start to appear. So these are kind of the good teams that are doing well, but maybe cracks are start to show and things are started to kind of take a turn for a little bit of a worse. Um, the third tier is always the man tier. It's like, it's okay. It could be, be, be better or it could be, be a lot worse than what these teams are. And unfortunately for these teams in the fourth tier, it's the things that have not gone well whatsoever in the beginning of the season. Or the second thing I also want to say, it's slowly to improve after a nightmare start. So yeah, most likely are those teams that were kind of like near, near the, the, the bottom of the tiers in my last emotion index, but I'm starting to kind of get them up a, in terms of the tier because things are definitely starting to improve. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Or uh, you have teams that are unfortunately on this tier where it's panic right now. It's everything is just going absolutely wrong. Or uh, you are at the point where the fan base wants someone to be hold accountable. Somebody need to be on the chopping block to hold accountable. And I'll definitely mention that there are a couple of teams that are, that are at that tier Though, I'm pretty sure you probably know who exactly it is. So, we start off with Atlanta United. And I'm actually going to go alphabetical order. Not just uh, with Western and Eastern Conference. But this is actually the alphabetical order in terms of the team based on the letters. So, as always, start with Atlanta United. And for Atlanta, you know, I would say they're kind of right here. And they kind of fits the category cracks for starting to be, be up here. I mean, you know, we know Atlanta has... Ha had a, a good start of their season, and you know, the whole, whole oh, it looks like Atlanta is back, that a lot of Atlanta fans have said a couple of weeks ago, and now cracks are start to appear, and again, a lot of that has to do with the fact that, you know, the, the goal scoring has started to dwindle a, a little bit, they're starting to have trouble on the attacking end, once again, a lot of that has to do with losing Yakimakis, um, who, who uh, not only ha has been the ideal Joseph Mar Martinez uh, replacement, but he's been the guy that's been able to help out on the attack, especially the holdup man. Uh, and what we saw in the, the last game against Nashville, just to show you how much they mi miss him. So, yeah, the cracks are starting to be up here, but still, Atlanta is doing very well so far this season are in, are in the playoffs as we speak. Uh, then we go to Austin, and for Austin, I mean... I guess it's still right here where it, it, it is it is panic. I mean, a, a lot of Austin fans, you know, they 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 have have gone through a really rough start to the season, seeing their team not only getting embarrassed in CCL, but now things are not going well either in terms of league play too. In some way, you could kind of say Austin is is kind of experienced the same thing that New England experienced last season, where you know New England uh suffer a heart heartbreaking CCL exit. And yeah, they were never the same in the regular season. But I will say this for Austin, the last game against the Quakes, there were definitely some signs of improvement. I mean, it has to be a huge relief seeing that Rigoni finally got his first goal for Austin FC. Like, it, 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 it's kind of crazy the fact that it took 15 games for that to finally happen. But it finally does, and we'll see how how that will give his confidence. But in general, I think Austin fans are a little bit happy the fact that in the last game, the attack is showing some, some comp because so far this team the reason why they're on this this winless run is neither they can attack or defend right now in in this losing run and when you do that i mean it's not a big surprise that they are on a losing run uh then we go to charlotte fc you know charlotte is kind of right here where it is definitely panic and someone need to to be 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 fire and in this case of course uh you know i know there's going to be some that say latanzio should be fired but definitely the front office i mean the front the, the a lot of Charlotte fans demand some of their their, their front office uh, 
members to be, be fired from this team because again it, it, it's not just just uh, the fact that Latanzio his his tactics has not worked out especially his late game game tactics it's been very very questionable but it's just in general how the, how the team team is built I mean the team is just just not built like from day one it wasn't all it was going to be be a mess in terms of the roster that they built and now they're really they suffering the the effect this season where yeah i mean this team just nowhere near looked like a team that is good enough to compete for the playoffs and 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 the fans are have started to turn on on the front office alongside with christian latanzio then we go to fc cincinnati and for cincinnati i mean i think it's still an ideal start for them i mean you you know i know no this is a team that they got a big wake-up call in in the game against st louis when they they lost 5-1 in that one, but they responded well with a 1-1 draw uh, against New England in a game where they were toe-to-toe -to -toe against the best team in the Eastern Conference. And again, this is the thing about Cincinnati that you know there's a, a culture change and you you know the fan base are happy with Pat Nolan because, you know, the old Cincinnati would just always find ways to lose. But what Pat Nolan has, has built is a winning culture or a culture where, you know, they, they are able to, to show that grittiness to to get a big resort and I think the fan base has to be happy in terms of how they were able to to get the resort against New England going on the road against a, a refs team that looked like they were going to try to get all three po points in that game uh but Cincinnati was able to hold on to get a point out of that uh then we go to the Colorado Rapids I mean for the Rapids I think they're kind of right here where you know we're getting to a point where I, I feel like you know uh, they were kind of in this category last month where it slowly started to improve after a nightmare start because Robin Frazier has really got the team much more de defensive stability. But unfortunately, with the way that, that they have been much more 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 defensive in terms of stabilize their defense, it has also left a lot to desire on, on the attacking end too. I mean, the attack is just still not at the level that you, that uh, they they hope for and that's where I think Robin Frazier is going to have to find find that balance like in the future sure I think saying Robin Frazier is going to like he knows that 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 he needs to be defensive because without if they decide to open themselves up then they're going to look like what they are in the first couple of games but it's also at a point where you don't want to be too de defensive and you sacrifice a lot on the attack and I think that's what Robin Frazier is going to have to figure out the balance and also the Rapids fans you know they're they're probably happy the fact that they're not losing games like they did in the beginning of the season but it also got to be frustrating the fact that you know they're draw drawing a lot of games and a lot of the games that they play hasn't been the most entertaining draws that we've, we've seen this year uh then we go to the Columbus crew yeah I'm gonna put Columbus next to Atlanta and it's kind of the same thing for Atlanta you know cracks are starting to to appear especially these last two games with back-to-back -back losses and you know after all the 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 praise that Wilfred Nancy has got got on um, doing that that good run that they had in April it started to kind of fall apart a little bit and it, it doesn't help when they do lose to a team like Inter Miami that was on on a downward respire a little bit especially at home so yeah that's going to be something that we'll see whether or not if Wilfred Nancy is going to turn around and again uh, I, I will We'll, we'll say say the the fact that you know finishing in the last game was kind of the big culprit. They, if they could have finished, that should have been been not just a draw, but should have been a win in in that one. And I also would say that you know I don't think uh, unlike Atlanta, I think Columbus they're they're probably okay. Where even though the cracks are starting to be appear, where there's still times where they 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 find ways to not not win games. Kind of a little bit of of that that stinge that they had last season under Caleb Porter, especially in the latter part of the season. I, I think think uh it's kind of the same same case with, with Pat Nolan when he came in in the first season with Cincinnati where you know there were still some some of that old Cincinnati that we seen that, that from 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 the time that Pat Nolan took over but it has definitely gotten a lot lot better and that's kind of the case for the Columbus Crew under Wilfred Nancy. Then we go to DC and for DC United, I think their fans are probably happy of what they're they're seeing. I mean, you know, they they after kind of a slow start that they had, uh, Wayne Rooney has really found the the balance and they're go on a winning thing run right now and we're kind of started seeing the boom period of this DC United team and not to mention uh speaking of of boom boom and busted, 
it is very clear that Christian Benteke is also oh in a boom kind kind of period because you know I I think Christian Benteke kind of symbolized what this team is this season where you know if he can get going then this team is going to do well but if he can't get going then this team is going to have have problems and so far he has been been a man in four form lately and even though you know he still has that occasion of missing chances which is kind of what the Christian Benteke experience is all about he's also scored some amazing goals like that bicycle kick, kick goal that I'm pretty sure will dazzle a lot a lot of DC fans but but overall DC fans should be happy with what Wayne Rooney has done and has really got this team to playing some very good soccer uh after them kind of start off to a slow start to the season uh, then we go to FC Dallas, and for Dallas, I mean, this is a weird team to figure out, because if you're a Dallas fan, I mean, I, I guess I, I can only put them in the middle, because it's kind of like, it's hard to figure figure out whether, if you're a Dallas fan, are you happy with the team that you, you, you see right now, because on one hand, you know, you're happy, uh, the fact that they're, they're still in a very good position in the Western Conference, I believe they're in fourth place right now in the standings, but on the other hand, you're kind of not happy with the way that, you know, the attacks still look very sta stagnant, and basically, if Jesus Ferrer is not scoring goals for this team, nobody can score or with them, and also on the defensive end, I feel like this season, they're started to make more more mistakes than we, we've seen last year, and it's not a big surprise, I mean, last season, uh, it was incredible seeing how stingy this Dallas defense is, and especially Nico Estevez did a good job in terms of or organizing his team, and that, that this back line, you know, last season, they just didn't make any mistake to kind of kind of hurt them themselves this season we're seeing a lot more more of that and that maybe is a huge concern if you're a dallas fan with with the way that not only now that the goal scoring has become a problem but if the defense started to become a problem uh, again then yeah this team can definitely sink in the standings but again as of now in terms of the standings wise i think dallas fans should be happy but it's just the way that they they play and the way that they look they probably aren't happy the fact that that's not going to be a team that you would think that it once they do make it to the playoffs that they could go 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 deep and they finally break through uh in terms of them fail to make it past the second round for the past couple of playoff appearance then uh we go to the houston dynamo yeah houston is going to be right near where dc is i mean again it's the same thing about about uh about the dynamo with dc or the same thing with DC as is the case for the Dynamo. I mean, there was a lot of skepticism about their head coach Ben Olsen, and especially after a bad start to the season, it looks like things were gonna take a turn for its worse. And then they started to be become coming un, not only unbeatable at home, but just a team team that if you walk into to Shell Energy Stadium and you play Houston on the road, yeah, you're expected to not get anything out out of that game because they're they've been perfect at home. They've been been very fun fun to watch, and I mean, Dynamo fans deserve to see that because that's something that they have not seen for a very very long time and heck you know that the houston dynamo is playing well when hector herrera is play, playing up to his potential i mean that that guy was a, a guy that that you know was kind of a fan favorite at le least when he, he was, was signed but it was pretty quick the dynamo fans started hating him because of him not living up to his potential and looked like he is washed up well this season it's been completely different he looked like the the guy that has been been an anchor for that L treat national team year in and year out and yeah the Dynamo was play the Dynamo was playing very well so far this season now if they can can replicate that on the road which is a big if because you know this team has historically has been one of the worst road team for the past couple of season and this season doesn't seem like that has changed because they still haven't won a road game this year uh, then we go to, uh, Sporting KC. Yeah, I don't have to mention too much about Sporting KC, because I, I made a video about them just a couple of days ago of how everything is doom and gloom and that someone need, need to be fired. So, yeah, I, I don't have to mention too much about how Sporting KC is right, right now. If they're, I think if you are a bad team, I've heard a lot of, a lot of fans of a bad team say, well, at least we're not Sporting KC. And, and that has to suck if you're a Sporting KC fan, the fact that, yeah, you know, you're you're basically getting getting mocked because of the fact that you're in a bad you see other team in a bad situation and they're basically using you as an example of the fact that it could have been a lot worse because right now for Sporting Casey, I can't tell you how how this team is just like not only this team has bought, bought them out, out, but it's been bought them out for for the past couple couple of weeks to a point where it it has single-handedly broken in this team like 
you know, it's not just the fan base that, that feel absolutely depressed. The players are absolutely like, depressed too. And a great example is the, the Johnny Russell interview. Like that, his reaction pretty much sums up Sporting KC this season and how the whole organization feel. They, they just don't know how to get out, out of this black hole that they're currently in in this historic bad start to the season. Uh, then we go to the LA Galaxy, who again is in the same situation. And again, I talk about bad teams that at least say, well, we're not at least bad as Sporting KC. I think Galaxy fans are basically using a lot of that too because they're kind of in the same situation. Although it's not really them wanted their their head coach to be gone, even though I know some that say that Vanny should should be fired because he has made no progress whatsoever. But more more on on the president, and now there's now talk about how how the fan base are not only not happy with how the team has performed, but also are not happy of one of their support group decided to sh to come back into the stands. Um, even though you know that was the whole point of, of the the protests of boycotting games. Yeah, you get the mess that the Galaxy are basically in. And even though, you know, they have played a little bit better lately, um, and and that thing of all that has to do with Chichirito being, being back in this lineup, he has definitely improved the, the attack. It's still, still, this team still is kind of in a run right now, and it's going to take a lot for them to try, trying to get themselves back into to a decent spot. But again, like, like a lot of Galaxy fans have said, you know, Things are bad for us, but at least we are not as dire as what what's going on with, with Sporting KC this season and have a historic bad run as what Sporting KC currently has. Then we go to their intercity rival, LAFC, and, you know, I'll tell you what, I've said this many times before and I'll say it again, it couldn't be different in terms of the, the tales of the two LA team. Like, both of those teams are in complete different projectile, while the Galaxy are just a, 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 a wreck it, can, uh burn kind kind of show right right now uh lafc is, is just absolutely flying right now i mean them moving on into the final of the concaf champions league and the way they play against the philadelphia union especially in that second leg that is a team that no one want to face right now and unfortunately one of one of the team that i really uh or the one of the team that i root for the san jose earthquakes gets to play against lafc uh at home so yeah i'm not gonna be looking forward to that though i i will say say this um you know with lafc we have seen times where there there's there's been teams that have suffered a bit of a bit of a letdown after an emotional win and i, I know that win that they had against the union to move on into the 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 final of the concave champions league it's going to be emotional win so that's kind of the only thing i'm hope as a quakes fan that maybe lafc will suffer a bit of a letdown and the quakes would we get a resort out of that because otherwise, you know, right now this is still the only team in the league that has not lost a game, and I don't think the Quakes is going to be that that team that's going to to hand them their fir first loss of the season. And if they do, that would definitely be one of the more surprising resort of of this season. Uh, then we go to Inter Miami, and for Miami, I mean, uh, you know what? I want to say they're kind of right here where you know. At least they finally snapped that, that long losing streak and that at least kind of give the fan base something to, to cheer about because you know this fan base uh, doing the six game losing streak is, is yelling Neville out uh, for, for every losses that they, they suffer because of how bad of a job that Phil Neville ha has done. But again, some of that has to do with, with also injuries too. And again, you know, just as I thought that it slowly looks like things will improve after a nightmare start after snapping their six game losing streak. Today they just found out that John Molta is going to be be out long term. So, yeah, they're 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 both of their their starting midfielder, uh, the guys that were supposed to protect this this midfield and hold the stability of this midfield. Both of them are done. Uh, well, one of them is done for the season. One of them probably won't return until very late in the season, if if not uh ever uh during this year. Or so. Yeah, things are looking bleak again for, for this Inter Miami team. Though, I guess maybe the only positive you could say that maybe slowly things are improved is that if Leo Campana can start to banging goals like he did against Columbus, maybe things are starting to get, get improved. And, and if Joseph Martinez can finally break out his his uh, his goal drought, which it's getting so bad to a point where Joseph Martinez, I actually found out that he, he, he was an unused sub in the last game. That says a lot about about how how Joseph Martinez, you know, this has been a huge fall from from Grace from from him, and that 
but you're looking at, at probably one of the biggest busts in one of the the worst trade of the year and a trade where we thought inter miami might have won won that trade and i think this is also another example uh, of why when it comes to trade i don't usually talk about who win and who lose the the trade because it can go go a whole different way and at that point it looked like Atlanta got absolutely fleeced in that deal but on the hindsight now I think maybe that might be a little bit di different especially with my uh, Atlanta finding their their replacement of Joseph Martinez whereas Inter Miami is you know they they at least still have Leo Campana but ideally they want Joseph Martinez to get 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 go going and actually score a goal for their team I mean it's now seven games. Uh, that he's played for Inter Miami, and it's hard to believe he has not not score a goal or even get an assist for this team too. He pretty much have done. He's getting like the 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 Rigoni treatment right now. Uh, for with Inter Miami, right? Uh, with how bad of a start of his time, uh, with his new team. Uh, but then we go to uh, Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, for Minnesota, you know. Again, early this season, it looked like it, w it was a dream start, but yeah, reality has started to set into this team. And I would say they're kind of trending in the downward for projectile where, I mean, I, I will say this for, for the Loons. I feel feel like in these last couple, couple of games, you know, they start having the same issue that they've been having for the past couple, couple of years. And that problem is goal scoring. And it, it's the lack of lack of finishing i feel like right now minnesota is ca kind of having the the same same timeline as what we we, we had uh, around this time of the year where i remember back in may last season that was a huge issue like this team just could not finish if, if their life depends on and then in june they went on a great great run and it went on on a run that actually got them all the way up into third in the standings so i'm hoping this is gonna be the same case again maybe i mean maybe luis Amaria. Can actually actually rediscover his good form that he he has when when the loons were fl flying last month because right now he's been pretty much end up to be the joining the 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 list of of number nines in this Minnesota United team that have just turns out to be failure like it, it's hard to believe that besides Christian Ramirez no striker on this Minnesota United team has has been been proven to be, be a goal scorer. I mean it, it's getting to a point where it's like a curse. I, Right now is that this team just does not not produce any good good number nines that is not named Christian Ramirez. So yeah, that's gonna be something that that this team needs to to figure out. I mean, you know, the defense right now is kind of the only reason why this they're keeping this team team relevant. And I, I feel so bad for for this this back line because you know time and time again they have put in an absolute flawless perform performance, but it's just been wasted because of the fact that no no nobody can can be be able to finish out of this team and you know i even said it's gone as deep as i said said in the last game against dallas where i'm kind of comparing them to sporting kc which you know it might be a little bit of a harsh comparison but i mean it kind of is starting to true i mean you saw in the last game where they they, they create the chan chances but just nobody is able to to finish and and that they need to snap out out of that if they if they they don't want to end up in the same situation that Sporting KC was, which is eventually it just kind of broke them because nobody could finish. Uh, then we go to uh, Montreal, and for Montreal, yeah, I think they're kind of the the epiphany of things are starting to slowly turn improve after a nightmare start. A lot of that has to do with the fact that they are playing playing at home. I mean, you know, their nightmare star was a combination of the fact that Heron Lasada, whatever his system that he's trying to implement, this Montreal team just does not work. They don't have the players to do so. And that, you know, this is a team that, you know, not a lot of people know that know this, but they are actually fighting a an injury crisis of their own too. A lot of their key players is cur currently out. And also not to mention, they have to play on the road for a lot of their games. So when you come create a combination of that, it's no surprise they kind of got off to to a nightmare star, and then of course after they decided to to trade uh, Kamal Miller, I wouldn't be 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 uh, I wouldn't blame any Montreal fans of start to stop watching this team because you know it looks like that that's a sign of waving the white flag and maybe punting this season. And I, I mean, if I even have a category of see you next season, they probably would have been been there by then. But give credit to her and Lasana, and give credit to this Montreal side. You know, they finally got their first road win. In the last game, we know they're going to get more home, home games because so far, I think they've only played like three home games uh, so far this season. And two of them were actually 
win. So things are going to be, be better for the this Montreal team once they do get more home, home games and that they've shown that they've been very good good at home. So, yeah, I think things are start to slowly improve for this Montreal team and and you know who knows maybe if they 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 do go get get a couple more wins they're right back into this I mean that's the the beauty of of this season and an early part of the season where you know even if you get up to such a nightmare start of the season unless if you're sporting KC sake you're not really out out of it you you string in a couple of wins together and all of a sudden you can get yourself right back into to the playoff picture and that seems like is the case for this Montreal side uh, then we go to Nashville. Yeah, I think Nashville, they, they probably be, are very happy with how, how they play. And again, I think what, what, what has to be, be encouraging if you're in Nashville is the fact that, you know, it's not just just heavily rely on Honey Mukhtar. I mean, Honey Mukhtar is still the key player on this team on the attack, but we're starting to see that there are some player on this team that is is able to contribute on the attack. I mean, guys like Fafa Pico, I thought that was a great signing that Nashville Got, got, and he has definitely pr produced very well. Teal Bunbury also doing, doing the, the same thing. Um, and also Jacob Schaffer continued to, to, to do well and continue to prove that. Yeah, a change of scenery was all he needs, and uh, for for him to rediscover of a, a a guy that has some some good potential, uh, that was kind of wasted doing his time with TFC because he was playing the wrong position. So. Yeah, I think it's got to be encouraging if you're a Nashville fan. The fact that, you know, you know, I know Hani Mukta is still a big part of it. And you still see him scoring the goals and creating the assists. But at least he's not just carrying this team. Like like what we see last season. Like last year, he was literally carrying this team on his back to a point where if it wasn't for an MVP kind of type of season that Hani Mukta has, that Nashville team would have would have not made it, it to the playoffs. So I think Nashville fans are very happy about that. And also their defense, like it always plays, has been very, very solid. And it's no surprise why they have had a relatively good successful season so far in the, back in the Eastern Conference. Then we go to New England. Uh, it's the same case. I think for the Rebs, their fans are probably happy of how, how this team has played. And again, I know uh, there's going to be a lot of people who say that the Rebs have, have got an easy schedule to start, start, which is kind of the case. But hey, Rebs fans won't care. They'll basically say, yeah, we can only play who we, we play. And it's not our fault, the fact that we play easy team. And also, that last game against Cincinnati, I think that, that was kind of a game where I know they didn't win that one, but that was definitely a statement. For the rest of the league, that hey, this team is not going to be a pushover. Like they, they, they're now faced against one of the, one of the better team that is FC Cincinnati, and that 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 was was considered a good performance, even if they didn't get the win. Now, obviously, the concern I will say about Rams fans is the fact that from what we find out today, that Dylan Barrero is going to be out for for the season. How much is that going to impact in terms of? of the attack especially on the wing area because he produced so much of that quality in in the wing area and now without him you know are they going to be be able to get that and especially uh the replacement in in Ishmael, uh you wonder if he he's gonna gonna produce that which again i don't know if that's going to be be the case because you know you know he you know it, it, what what dylan barrero brings to this team is it, just it really re reminds me of of tejan buchanan and what he 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 done and that Barrero has has easily but been been a great replacement uh for the for the 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 the, the player like Tejan Buchanan that they they lost after they sell sell them off to Europe. Uh but moving on to the next team, we got the New York Red Bulls. Yeah, the Red Bulls are kind of in this category where they're kind of joining the Galaxy and Sporting KC where their fan base wants someone to be be held accountable, somebody needs to be fired and in this case Gerhard Stubert is the guy that a lot of Red Bulls fans are demanding them to him to be be fired, and especially the fact that I've heard that Dante Van Zier is training again, and and the fact that if he is gonna play for 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 the team, you know maybe some Red Bulls fans are not gonna forget about the the whole situation, and the the Gerhard Stubert kind of chant is gonna get louder and louder. But a lot of that has to do with just the perform performance wise. I mean, it has nowhere near as good. I mean, this has been been. Probably the worst start I've seen the Red Bulls have gone through in a very long time. And that, yeah, this Red Bulls front office, they're not not afraid to fire head, head coaches if, if performance are not met. And I think Gerard Schubert, you can see if he if he's continued to go through through this the, this losing run, I, I won't be surprised the Red Bulls front office is going to pull the, 
the, the trigger and that, again, I said before that he is most likely going to be the first one to be let go this season. And I'm going to say that that's going, still going to be the case. He is under so much pressure right right now. And it's not just the handling with the Dante Benzier situation, that, but also just the the way that this team is 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 on a on a verge uh, of finally having a season that what we kind of thought that it was going it was about to bound to happen, which is they're gonna have a bad season where they're not gonna make the playoffs for the first time in thirteen years. Then we go to their intercity rival NYCFC. Oh, they're kind of right down the middle, which kind of summarized this team in this season where you know if they're playing at home, they're they're going to look like the the NYCFC that we know. But if they're playing on the road, they're going to look like the NYCFC team that we thought they were coming into this season is that a team that is going through transition and that there's a lot of question in terms of who in the is going on going to to provide the goals on the attacking end because yeah it, it's kind of weird to see how how bipolar this team is where they play so well at home but then they play so well so badly on the road and that's even when the NYCFC are playing at a baseball stadium. I mean, I know that it could be be an argument for that, but even with that, you know, I, I've seen where where NYCFC ha, ha, down the years have, have played very well at home, and I mean, the ba playing at a baseball stadium and playing on a short short uh pitch side definitely plays to their advantage. But I didn't think it would have had that much advantage where. Uh, they would be just completely broken whenever they go on the road. And that's kind of what this is. So, I mean, that's that's kind of exactly in the middle of the tier where their fan base are going to be saying, it's okay because at least we're winning at home. But it could have been a lot better when we can find some some consistency uh, this year. Uh, but now moving on to Orlando City. Again, I think that's kind of the same case where I would say putting them, this is kind of a little bit high of putting them in Orlando City. City in terms of the emotion index, I probably could have put right here where things are not going well, mainly because inconsistency still is a huge issue with this team. This team still has the same problem as la last year, where where they 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 cannot establish a a a, a run of form where they're they're de decent, and that there there's times where where um the attack is just very sta stagnant, and that's even after of all the quality that they add to doing this all off season so yeah if you're an orlando city fans it's very frust frustrating and you just hope that eventually it does come to, to an end like you just hope that with every wins that orlando C city has i'm pretty sure their fan base is okay this has got to be the time when we finally see this orlando city team turn the corner and start to to play up to their potential and then next thing you know they lose on on the road or lose at, at home to a team that they should easily beat and so yeah, that's kind of that. That's kind of kind of a brutal cycle for for any fan base to experience. I mean, it's not as bad as what what we see with some of these bad teams, but it's still a very infuriating cycle. To if you're a fan, an Orlando City fans suffer the fact that your team just cannot find some inconsistency incons whatsoever, and even if that inconsistency is enough to make it to the playoffs, because really this season you can be as inconsistent as you want. You're gonna make it to the playoffs, but you're gonna make it to the playoffs as a seven or eight seed and most likely you're going to knock out in the first round which is what Orlando City uh, has been been having problems in terms of the last couple of years they cannot get past the first round then we go to the Philadelphia Union and again I mean I feel like I, I need to put the Union in a, in, in a special category because I mean I'm going to put them in the middle too but really they need to be below in a special category where it, it's hard to, to judge what their fan, fan base feel about their 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 form in the league because they're they've been so focused on the CONCACAF Champions League. Now, unfortunately, that that did end and just like what we saw la last year in the MLS Cup run which is it ended near the near the final hurdle because once again they cannot conquer LAFC. They could not get that revenge that they they were so looking forward to it heading into this two-legged affair against LAFC in CCO. So now it's going to be interesting to see how how this team will will react will they they react strongly and had that hunger of well we're going to to do now really just just take this this on everybody and make this person so no so we can get back to that stage or are they going to crumble like what 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 we seen with austin after that embarrassing loss that they had 
had against Philadelphia, or even New England when they had that that embarrassing uh, collapse against Pumas in the second leg, and they just never recover. So let's see what kind of what, what kind of a Union team is going to be. And if you're a fan of the team, you hope that you see the the latter because I mean that's if you're a Union fan, it, it's got to be very fr fresh frustrating and and it, it sounds kind of kind of crazy to say it for for a good team like the union but if you're a, a fan and you seem so much heart heartbreak and them not able to get it get get it done on the final hurdle it's kind of frustrate you too too and that's kind of the unfortunate thing that union fans has had to deal with at least for the past couple of years uh but now moving on to the portland timbers yeah the timbers i would say they're here and and i would say that you know it's not just it's okay, but could be better. But I think they are also the epitome of it slowly starting to improve after a nightmare start. And who would have predicted the fact that after after the they win in the Cascadia Derby against the Seattle Sounders would lift this team? I mean, it, it, I I think everybody knew that was coming coming, especially uh, myself. And right now, you can see it. This Timbers team they look much more confident, especially on the attacking end. That what we saw. Pretty much for the entire first part of the season before that Cascadia Derby, and now it's all about how high can they go? Because right now, I think they're they're currently six in in the standings after that big win on the road against St. Louis, and you can see this team is like starting to look like the Portland Timbers that we we know of. And what's even more impressive is the fact that they're doing this even with with some 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 uh, still some some big injury concern, and the latest one has to be seen there. They're one of the one of the, supposed to be a replacement for for Diego Chara and the hair of Diego Chara in David Ayala once again going down down with a season ending injury. So yeah, they're gonna hope that Diego Chara doesn't age and maybe Father Time doesn't catch up to to him just yet because they they really need need him because after that they have absolutely zero depth in term, terms of that that void that Diego Chara basically fills for this team. Uh, then we go to RSL. You know, for RSL, I would say they're kind of right here where, I mean, things were starting to, to improve for this team, at least in the last couple of games. But now it's kind of like it's it's stuck in the void, though. Again, you know, uh, the last game that they had where they play against a really good Seattle team, I think they'll be happy. The fact that they got a point out of that reserve. But, you know, again, if you're an RSL fan, things still hasn't hasn't. Uh, been good and that you know they're started just slowly slowly trying to get out of that nightmare kind of kind of month that they had in march where they they went on absolute free fall during that that month because of them losing every single game and again they're also trying to stay healthy they're very happy to see that demir cry like at least it started to be be back healthy and so forth but yeah you know it's it's a, it's a little bit of a slow slow climb that they're going but you know you know at least at least you know these last couple of games they have shown some some good resort and again the last game uh you know even though they did drop draw points and you know dropping points usually is not not a good thing at home but when you're able to get get something out of, out of a red hot seattle sounders team every, every rsl fans would take that then we go to the san jose earthquakes you know for the quakes i would say they're kind of right here i'm still happy the 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 fact that they they're 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 where they are right now. I mean, yes, I would say I ideally things could be be a lot lot better for for this team if they don't keep blowing leads left and right on the road. I mean, it's hard to believe that you know if this team can actually close out game on the road, they could be near 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 the top part of the standings. But but still, you know, I I would say that this this has been been a, a season that they kind of have exceeded ex expectations right now and that you know i will also say that for this quakes team it is still very to be determined whether or not you know heading into this crucial stretch of of the season where we know they're going to play some very tough games coming up because they have to play lafc twice uh in a span span of a couple of weeks and i believe they also have to play seattle um and also dallas uh although that dallas game is actually at home they're they're, they're about to face a gauntlet of a schedule that will really tell me a lot about this Quakes team, um, but as of now, you know, I will say that that I'm I'm at least happy where where they are in the standings. Although again, maybe that will be different next time when I do do this emotion. And next, they might end up being right around here if they they don't survive that 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 gauntlet. Uh, but yeah, as of now, I think Luchi Gonzalez has has done 
done uh, very well with this team. And also, I am well aware that they did lose to Monterey Bay. And, and that, you know, I, I'm definitely aware because I, I was actually there in person to, to see it happen. And, and you know, overall, as much as I hate hate the fact that the Quakes could make, make a U.S. Open Cup run, this team has never really cared about the, the U.S. Open Cup. Not since probably in 2018 when they made it all the way to the semifinals. So it's not a big surprise they got an early exit there. And in fact, I think it's better that they get an early exit so so you know they they can focus more on on lead play play um in, in instead instead of uh, of focusing on on a, another competition that could, could really te test the depth of this team which this team does not have a lot of depth depth uh so yeah overall i think i'm happy where they are but like i said you know cracks will be starting to show and if they they go go through this gauntlet and they just absolutely stink it up and go and slide down in the standings. Uh, then we go to the Seattle Sounders. Yep, I think the Sounders, it's still been an ideal start. I mean, yes, the new new draw against RSL was kind of a little bit frustrating because they had the chances to win that one. But, you know, right now, with the way that Seattle's sitting at the top of the... Well, they're, are they sitting at the top of the standings? Yeah, I think they're sitting at the top of the standings because I I know that LAFC, technically, uh, if you look at points per, per game... They would be be at the top of the standings, but Seattle, uh, right now are at the top top of the the standings, leapfrogging St. Louis. And anytime we have the top of the the standings in your respective conference, I, I cannot put them anywhere lower than where they are. It's been an ideal start for the Sounders team. That is again, they're they're a team that definitely is chasing for some supporter shield shield uh, trophy for for this year. Uh, then we go to St. Louis. Yeah, I think for St. Louis, I'm going to start putting them in the second category. I mean, you would think that it would still be in the first category because technically, as an expansion team, this is still uh, by far the one of the best start we have ever seen an expansion team has. But I, I would say that cracks are starting to appear for the St. Louis side. And that after that magical start to their, their life in MLS with five wins to, to start their life in MLS, you know, I, I think... Cracks are starting to be appearing that they're starting to kind of look like what 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 we we were thinking an expansion team would would look like, which is there's going to be some adversity that they're they're going to face, and that a lot of that has to do with the fact that I think some teams are starting to figure St. Louis out a little bit, and that also those naysayer of St. Louis are going to say, well, look at that, look what happened when when they are not gifted with back pass goals every single week. They're starting to look a little bit mortal, but I will say this. I do think the St. Louis team will make it to the the playoffs, and I do think that uh, Bradley Carnell will find a ways to to adjust a, a little bit, and that you know still it, it does take a lot lot to beat the St. Louis side. Like you know, if you cannot survive that initial show press, and you, if you don't have have a a good way to to play direct, because I know the formula is there is that you know you just have to play direct, and you just maybe need to survive St. Louis in terms of their pressing, and if you keep this keep this uh, one tight then you can tire them out as you get into the second half but unfortunately not every team can can you follow that formula and do, does it sit well because if that's the case then Cincinnati should easily won against St. Louis but that did not happen they got absolutely stomped by by St. Louis so it just shows you that you know even though maybe some teams have figured out St. Louis this is a team that still shows some resilience and even in their last game against the Timbers I mean I know St. Louis fans said that that was easily their worst game uh, in MLS, but even then, they, they they were still able to to stay in that game for for most part, and even thought that they they would have got away away with a point out of that game against the tip versus if they didn't just concede just three minutes later. So even when St. Louis are are playing at its worst, uh, they still look like a team that that is not going to get get pull, pull apart, and that's kind of what I think St. Louis is going to be. It's going to be a team that you think that you have the formula to beat them, but still they're going to to find way ways ways to to win games because the, the other thing that i think st louis fans should be very happy about this team is the resiliency this team is very very resilient and there's no formula to to, to get past the team that is is very resilient and stuff like that uh then we go to toronto yeah i think toronto is kind of again in that category where it's it slowly started to improve after a nightmare start to the season you know finally they were able to get a a win in the last game, which I believe that was like the first win that they they had since the the since um the second game of the the season. But 
Now the team is starting to slowly improve, and a lot of that has to do with you know getting some some key guys back. Getting Lorenzo Insigne back is definitely huge for the this TFC team. But you know we'll we'll see how 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 far that they can can go uh for for this T TFC side whether or not if they can get themselves back back into a playoff position, which is that's the expectation for, for this team, or at least the bare minimum in terms of the expectation that they have. Then we go to Vancouver. I mean. Again, I'm going to put Vancouver right next to Colorado because they're kind of in the same situation to where, you know, they didn't get off to a great start, but it looks like like their head coach has kind of stabilized things. But now they're also started to having problems in, in terms of the attack and also having problems in terms of t turning draws into wins. I mean, it's got to drive Annie Sertini crazy, the fact that they're, they're tur they're, they've been, been playing well in terms of keeping the game close. They can't take turn those, those resort in into wins in fact this season you know at bc place yes they have got wins at, at home a couple of times but it's not as often as we what we've seen and that's got to be frustrating for for a team like the white caps that they usually don't do well on on the 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 road that they need those home home, home wins so we'll see whether or not if any sartini can can figure it out and whether again it's, it's going to be the same thing that i've said about robin frazier find that balance in terms of at least still able to keep your your team very defensive organized but not just use that as, as, as use it to sacrifice your attack that doesn't 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 do uh do it well well uh so far that this this year but there you have it that is pretty much it in terms of the emotion index for april let me know in the comments below what do you think of this video and it, as always let me know in the comments below do i put some of your the the team a little bit too high in the emotion index or a little bit too low in the emotion index but either way hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you guys do like smash the subscribe button and yeah i of course will see you guys next time